Hello, everyone, and welcome to a discussion video. It's been a while since I've done one of these, um, mainly because I've been pretty busy and not had as much time as to check out things as I want, want to. Um, but uh, recently I've been rereading uh, The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings books, as you would know from watching my Lego The Hobbit playthrough, because I've talked about that during my time playing that game. But um, today I wish we wanted to discuss said books, because I finished um, the returning of the king yesterday, and uh, sort of do that style thing of what I always do. So obviously, um, The Hobbit is like the prequel to The Lord of the Rings, and Follows the adventures of one Bilbo Baggins uh, as he journeys with Thorin Oakenshield and company to the Lonely Mountain to retrieve the treasure that Smog uh, has taken when he came and uh, fucked that shit up and killed most of the doors and it's definitely what is it? green the homeland is just an epic book really, because um, each sort of independent chapter is like its own little uh, self-enclosed adventure which add up to a whole for the one big adventure that is The Hobbit. It's just really, really, really well written. It's very enjoyable to read. It's a, it's a lot nicer to read compared to The Lord of the Rings which is a slightly more advanced book uh, aimed towards maybe teenagers and stuff, whereas The Hobbit, I could quite easily see a youngest child being able to read it because it's, it's more suited for that sort of audience. It's, it's just really awesome and it's really well paced and stuff compared to The Lord of the Rings, it's like bar the first chapter in The Hobbit, everything's sort of relatively interesting to read about because obviously they're all self-included adventures to add to the whole. Whereas in Lord of the Rings, um, that like the first book uh, contains the story of Frodo journeying to Rivendell, but he doesn't start that journey until about halfway through that book and it's just super boring and that and then you get to the second book which starts with the Council of Valwan to like the most boring chapter ever. And eventually gets this good bit of them journeying from Riven down to the Falls of Warwas. And when the fellowship breaks up and Frodo and Sam go off to Immune Mule and uh, Army dies, uh, Mary and Pippin get taken by Rooks and Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli go follow them. But you know, eh. And then um, True Towers, who's I think uh, probably the, it's, it's definitely been a really good one this time around reading um, Two Towers. I think sometimes I think, I think that might be the best book out of the three, just because it's like it's got the most happening. Well, it's not the most stuff happening in it, but the most interesting stuff happening in it. Because you, you've got the tale of Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli as they chase after Merry and Pippin, and then them going to address and dealing with and the Battle of Helm's Deep and, and you've got Maren Pippin um, going to Fangorn and doing the ants and battling and battling in Isengard and you've got the journey of Frodo and Sam as they go through the Emmy Mule and Dead Marshes and with Gollum getting to the, the Black Gate and going down through Ithel and, and meeting Fanry and as you eventually working the way up the mark of wheel to Seraph Ungle and the stairs and the shell blair and all that sort of stuff. Quite a lot of interesting stuff happens in it. And then in the Return of the King you have the first book which focuses on sort of the battle surrounding Mary Minas Tirith and then going up to the battle of Blackgate and with Aragorn being like retaining his the king and all that good stuff, sort of good stuff, and a lot of interesting stuff happens along the way, and 
you get this little shitty bit of Frodo and Sam's journey in Mordor 2 though. Crack it doom and destroying the ring and then oh it's all nice and stuff and they stay um, in Minister for a bit and slowly make the way home to the Shire where the, the, in the books compared to the films the Shire has been raised by Saruman and you have this and then you have to sort them out and stuff. Uh, well, you know, as a whole, it is one of my favourite book series. Although there's, uh, sometimes it gets a bit long-winded, particularly sort of the appendices in the Return of the King. It, it didn't. It take me like three days to read the entire um, book. You know, the good good book because I I went home last week and I just had a lot of free time there, so I was just like just read my book. But the appendices took me like a, a few days to get through because I mean it's all interesting information, but it's just like uh, long-winded um, writing and stuff. But yeah, for now, I really do enjoy um, reading them. It's something that I probably will continue for the rest of my life is rereading them every couple of years. Probably gonna have to do Harry Potter again soon because it's been like two years since I read them. I always like doing Harry Potter as well because my dad, I do you know. But um, other than that, it's, I, I sort of wanted to this sort of discuss. Obviously, um, both The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings have been made into films. Um, obviously, The Lord of the Rings is a franchise. Well. Is it, over ten years now since um, the Return of the King, which came out in two thousand three, came out, and it's like again, I I I remember going to the cinema and watching that, uh, the last film, particularly, um, and it's just like they are probably the greatest films ever made. The Lord of the Rings. I mean, I like oh, Harry Potter and Star Wars as much as the next guy, but. To me, the Lord of the Rings just exemplifies amazing filmography. It's just like, because obviously you've got the really amazing story from Lord of the Rings. J.R.R. Tolkien did an amazing job of writing and creating a world that's very rich and vibrant. And you've got very detailed characters who have their own thoughts and processes, and they all come together to make a whole for the fellowship kind of deal and all very interesting stuff and then they go on a, an epic adventure where you see the smallest person can ha make the biggest change in the world relatively yeah, and, and the films captured the essence of the books really well I mean it didn't include every event in the books which obviously if it did the movies would be a lot longer than what it was, and but you know they did a really good job, and most importantly, it wasn't just like the way they they made the films was incredible, using practical effects wherever they could, and um, so all the orcs and orcs were all make up, they made stalwarts and costumes and all that kind of stuff, and then for the bigger set pieces, kind of like the battles and stuff, which you get are just amazing in the films it's like you read a, the Helm's Leap Battle and it's just like oh, that's a bit shit because um, he spends about a chapter on it and it isn't, isn't the best um, battle described I've ever read there's other authors who do a lot better job in describing battles and such but nevertheless it's still like the movie for that one did a really good job of doing that and then the battles around Mary Minas Tirith again was just like really well done in the movies. I mean it's a lot more described in the books than than Helm's Deep because it's um, it's they sp he spends several chapters just going around the different points of the battle sort of thing. Cause you have a chapter on Mary with the right of the Rohan you have Pippin being inside Minas Tirith and then you've got like Aragorn coming up from the river. It's all very sort of interesting and stuff how these events correlate into the whole for 
and again the movies did a really good job and obviously they used CG effects to replicate like 6000 Raiders of Rome coming and charging in and mama kills and all the sort of orcs and stuff because obviously they can't replicate that practically I mean they have they had like 100 extras for the horse riding scene if I remember correctly somewhere around, around there so they had 100 people on 100 horses do the ride and then they just replicated that to make the 6000 and they had like similar numbers for doing Elm's Deep and other odd things where they, they'll have all these extra people dress them up in costumes and they get to fight them it's really really well done I really, really enjoyed the films, and then obviously I was really, really excited when they announced, "Oh yes, we do, we're going to be doing uh, the Hobbit." And at the time, they it's like, "We'll make it into two films," which I think it, it should have been two films, to be honest. Um, not the three that it turned out to be. I mean, again, it's like there was enough for three, but the edited just added in so much necessary crap to me to the films to just didn't bulk it up and, and it's just like no don't 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 do that I mean the Lord of the Rings films was relatively accurate kept accurate but it's like the Hobbit so it was more like an interpretation of the Hobbit book rather than being strictly 100% accurate to the Hobbit book I mean, You've got the major events in the Hobbit book, or in the Hobbit films that do follow the books, and you've got riddles in the dark with Garland and, and stuff like that. And the, some of the stuff in Mirkwood getting having the dwarfs captured by spiders and stuff like that, and, 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 and getting captured by the uh, elves and them riding in the barrels and all that sort of stuff. But and then the just do the stupid interpretations of having Toriel falling in love with Killy and it's just like no I don't want that in my film um, and the only dwarf elf relationship that matters is Legolas and Gimli the best of friends from the Lord of the Rings and it's just like you've just created the most stupid love story ever really with that and it just didn't make sense to have it in the, the films to me. I mean, obviously, Toriel's character is really cool and stuff, you know, but it's just like, don't worry. I mean, they could by all means have a badass female elf. Um, I mean, they had Harwin and, and Glacier and Lothar Inns, and uh, that would have been cool, but you know. Just don't make them fall in love with a dwarf because it's not accurate whatsoever to the world of Lord of the Rings and all the other shit like having Asgard be a villain when he's dead and uh, you just really bum me out now. They could have been really amazing films and they just fell short of that because they chose to be more interpretive of the material than strictly accurate and it's like you're know, the same people who made all the things you should you know how to make a good decent set of films but primarily it's just like no we'll all go in this direction so yeah so for me the best film out of all of them was the first one the unexpected journey the restoration of small hawk which was alright but uh, Long-winded. I mean, that is. It's, it's like the passage for that is is a good, good sec segment of the book, um, roughly, because it did. The, there's only a few more quotes, probably long in the book. It, it, it's like a whole chapter called Flies and Spiders. And then obviously the Merc with the the elves and stuff would bounce off bound. Idea. And it's pretty interesting. But you know, it's, it's like they don't have so much stuff with Bjorn, which I wanted. And they don't have everything 
uh, from right quick that they should have done. Apparently it's in the extended which I've not seen yet. Probably will watch that at some point, I think. I'm planning on getting the extended edition um, trilogy whenever when they release that later on this year. Probably. Um but yeah. And this is instead of doing the orcs practically like he briefly stated that it did really diddly and it just doesn't look uh, in as good as as a practical effect for them in this league. Then they don't get to interact nearly as much with like uh, every every the guys in the costume you get to actually have feedback from him sort of things right there and there then whereas in the sort of films when it's done digitally you have a guy probably in a motion capture suit um, so you do get that feedback but he doesn't look like an orc so you can't react to how he's looking he's sort of reacting to his physical presence really and I just wish they, they kept on doing what they did but you know oh well and then the last one the battle of the five armies was like they vastly extended the actual battle scene to make the film and it's just like you know, it's a pretty detailed battle scene admittedly um, but you know it's like you, you spend an hour on this epic battle scene when you do, didn't really need to so you know, it's just my fault it's just, it should have been two films rather than three and the Lord of the Rings films were a lot better than the Hobbit films, but the Hobbit book is probably no, no, no. The Hobbit book and the Lord of the Rings books are on the same level for me of enjoyment. Yeah, but there you go. That's my thoughts on Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. And I'll see you guys next time for another video. Peace out, Girl Scouts.